Proteinuria, a term that might sound unfamiliar, but it's something that can have serious implications on your health, especially when it comes to your kidneys. You might wonder, what exactly does it mean? To put it simply, proteinuria refers to the presence of an abnormal amount of protein in your urine. While a small amount of protein in the urine is normal, higher levels could indicate a problem with your kidney's ability to filter waste in fluids properly. This video is dedicated to explaining what proteinuria is, what causes it, the symptoms that come with it, and how it can be diagnosed, treated, and even prevented. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear, in-depth understanding of why proteinuria is not something to ignore, and more importantly, what you can do if you suspect you may have it. Now, why is this topic so important? Our kidneys play a vital role in our body's health by filtering waste, balancing electrolytes, and maintaining blood pressure. However, when the kidneys are damaged, whether due to chronic conditions like diabetes or high blood pressure, or due to infections or medications, they may start leaking proteins into the urine, a clear sign that something is off. Protein is essential for our body's normal functioning, helping to build muscles, repair tissues, and fight infections. When proteins like albumin, which should stay in the blood, end up in the urine, it means the kidneys are failing to do their job. This leakage, in medical terms, is known as proteinuria, and it's often one of the earliest indicators that the kidneys are under stress or damage. What makes proteinuria concerning is that in its early stages, it often doesn't cause noticeable symptoms. Many people with proteinuria are unaware that their kidneys are compromised because the condition can silently progress for years. This makes routine checkups and urine tests critical, particularly if you're at risk of kidney disease due to underlying health conditions. Without timely intervention, the problem can escalate, leading to chronic kidney disease CKD, kidney failure, or the need for treatments like dialysis or even a kidney transplant. In today's video, we'll not only discuss what proteinuria is, but also dive into its causes, symptoms, diagnostic processes, and treatments, while also exploring how you can take preventive steps to protect your kidneys in the long term. So stay with us, because this information could be life-changing. What is proteinuria? Let's begin by breaking down what proteinuria really is, in the simplest terms possible. Proteinuria is essentially a condition where the kidneys are letting too much protein escape into the urine. Normally, your kidneys act like a filter, removing waste products and excess fluid from your blood while keeping important substances like protein in the bloodstream. Think of the kidneys as a finely tuned sieve. This sieve has small pores that allow waste and excess fluid to pass through but it's supposed to hold back large molecules, such as proteins, so they stay in the bloodstream where they belong. However, when your kidneys are damaged, this filtering mechanism doesn't work properly, and large proteins leak into the urine. The most common protein that appears in the urine when you have proteinuria is albumin, although other proteins can be present as well. Why is this leakage such a big deal? Proteins like albumin serve critical roles in maintaining the body's fluid balance, transporting hormones, vitamins, and enzymes, and supporting immune function. When you lose too much protein through urine, it disrupts these vital processes. Normally, the kidneys only allow tiny amounts of protein to escape, so little that a routine urine test would show either no protein or trace amounts that are insignificant. But with proteinuria, the amount of protein in the urine is much higher often enough to be detected by a simple dipstick test or more sophisticated urine analysis. When protein levels are elevated, it's a sign that something is wrong with the kidney's filtering units, called glomeruli, and that they aren't functioning as they should. This isn't just a minor issue, if left untreated, proteinuria can lead to long-term kidney damage, chronic kidney disease, and even kidney failure. To put things into perspective, proteinuria can be classified into three categories, transient, temporary, orthostatic, positional, and persistent, long-term. Transient proteinuria occurs temporarily, usually as a result of factors like exercise, stress, fever, or dehydration. It's generally not a cause for concern and usually resolves on its own. Orthostatic proteinuria is a condition in which protein is present in the urine only when the person is standing or active, and it disappears when lying down. 
This form is typically benign and doesn't indicate kidney damage. However, persistent proteinuria is when protein consistently appears in the urine, regardless of position or activity level, and this is the most concerning type because it usually points to an underlying kidney issue. In short, proteinuria is not a disease in itself but a symptom of a potential problem with the kidneys. It's a signal that something isn't working as it should, and this makes it a crucial early indicator of kidney disease or other health conditions. Whether it's due to a temporary condition or something more serious, detecting proteinuria early can lead to better outcomes, as early treatment can prevent further damage to the kidneys. Causes of proteinuria Next, let's dive deeper into the causes of proteinuria. Proteinuria can occur for several reasons, and understanding these causes can help us manage and potentially prevent this condition. Some of the most common causes include kidney diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure, infections, and medications. Let's break down each of these causes in detail. Kidney diseases. The kidneys can be directly affected by various diseases, some of which lead to the loss of protein into the urine. Two common conditions include glomerulonephritis and nephrotic syndrome. In glomerulonephritis, the tiny filters in your kidneys, called glomeruli, become inflamed. This inflammation weakens the filtering ability of the kidneys, allowing proteins to escape into the urine. If not treated promptly, glomerulonephritis can lead to chronic kidney disease. Nephrotic syndrome, on the other hand, is a condition characterized by significant protein loss, swelling, and high cholesterol levels. It can result from various underlying health issues, including autoimmune diseases like lupus or infections. Nephrotic syndrome leads to extensive damage to the kidney's filtering system, causing large amounts of protein to be lost in the urine. Diabetes, one of the leading causes of proteinuria is diabetes, particularly when it's poorly managed. Over time, high blood sugar levels damage the blood vessels in the kidneys, impairing their ability to filter properly. This condition is known as diabetic nephropathy and is one of the most serious complications of diabetes. In fact, proteinuria is often one of the first signs of diabetic kidney disease. The longer someone has diabetes, especially if their blood sugar levels are not well controlled, the greater the risk of kidney damage. Regular monitoring of urine for protein is essential for people with diabetes to catch any early signs of kidney dysfunction. High blood pressure, high blood pressure, or hypertension, is another major cause of proteinuria. The kidneys are rich in blood vessels, and when blood pressure is consistently high, it puts extra strain on these vessels. Over time, this pressure damages the blood vessels in the kidneys, impairing their ability to filter waste and proteins properly. High blood pressure can also cause or worsen kidney disease, creating a vicious cycle. People with hypertension are often advised to undergo regular urine tests to check for protein, as this can be an early sign that their kidneys are under stress. Infections, infections, particularly those that affect the kidneys like pyelonephritis, can also lead to proteinuria. Pyelonephritis is a type of urinary tract infection, UTI, that spreads to the kidneys, causing inflammation and damage to the kidney tissue. This can temporarily increase the amount of protein in the urine. However, once the infection is treated, the proteinuria usually resolves. Other systemic infections, such as viral infections, can also cause transient proteinuria as the body fights off the infection. Medications, certain medications can cause proteinuria as a side effect, particularly drugs that affect the kidneys. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, certain antibiotics, and chemotherapy drugs can all lead to kidney damage in some cases, resulting in proteinuria. For example, long-term use of NSAIDs, especially in high doses, can cause kidney damage and reduce kidney function. It's important to discuss any potential side effects with your doctor, especially if you're taking medications that are known to affect the kidneys. Each of these causes affects the kidneys differently, but they all result in one common outcome, the kidneys lose their ability to filter properly, leading to protein leakage into the urine. Identifying the root cause of proteinuria is critical for determining the right treatment plan and preventing further kidney damage.
Symptoms of Proteinuria What are the symptoms of proteinuria, and how can you tell if you might have it? In many cases, especially in the early stages, proteinuria doesn't cause any noticeable symptoms, which is why it's often referred to as a silent condition. Many people may not even realize they have it until it's discovered during a routine urine test. However, as proteinuria progresses, or if the protein loss is significant, symptoms may begin to appear. Let's go over the most common signs of proteinuria, foamy urine. One of the most visible signs of protein in the urine is foamy or frothy urine. If you notice that your urine looks bubbly or foamy, it could be a sign that there's a significant amount of protein being excreted. This happens because proteins, especially albumin, lower the surface tension of urine, causing bubbles to form. While some foaminess in urine can be normal, especially if you're dehydrated or urinating with a lot of force, persistent foaming urine could indicate proteinuria. Swelling, edema when the body loses large amounts of protein, it can lead to swelling, especially in the legs, ankles, feet, and around the eyes. This is because albumin, a key protein that helps maintain the balance of fluids in the body, is being lost in the urine. Without enough albumin in the blood, fluid leaks out of the blood vessels and into surrounding tissues, causing swelling. This swelling, known as edema, can range from mild to severe, depending on how much protein is being lost. Fatigue, people with significant proteinuria may also experience fatigue or tiredness. This happens for several reasons. First, the body needs protein to maintain muscle mass, repair tissues, and support immune function. When too much protein is lost through the urine, the body doesn't have enough to carry out these essential functions, leading to feelings of weakness and fatigue. Additionally, if proteinuria is a sign of underlying kidney disease, the kidneys may not be filtering waste products properly, which can also contribute to fatigue. Weight gain, unexplained weight gain can also be a symptom of proteinuria, particularly if it's related to fluid retention. As the body retains fluid due to the loss of proteins like albumin, it can lead to weight gain that seems sudden or unaccounted for by changes in diet or activity level. If you notice that you're gaining weight despite no significant changes in your eating or exercise habits, it's worth discussing with your doctor, as it could be related to kidney issues. Shortness of breath, in severe cases of proteinuria, where fluid retention becomes more pronounced, you may start to experience shortness of breath. This can happen because excess fluid builds up in the lungs, a condition known as pulmonary edema. When this occurs, it becomes difficult for the lungs to expand fully, leading to shortness of breath, especially during physical activity or when lying flat. If you experience this symptom, it's important to seek medical attention right away, as it can indicate severe kidney dysfunction or heart problems. These symptoms can range from mild to severe depending on the underlying cause of proteinuria and how much protein is being lost. If you notice any of these signs, particularly if they persist or worsen, it's essential to consult a healthcare provider. Keep in mind that proteinuria can be a sign of serious kidney disease or other health conditions, so early detection and treatment are crucial for preventing long-term damage. Diagnosis of proteinuria How exactly is proteinuria diagnosed? Since it can often be asymptomatic in its early stages, diagnosing proteinuria usually requires specific tests that detect protein levels in the urine. If your doctor suspects you have proteinuria, they will likely start with a urinalysis, which is a simple test that involves examining a urine sample. A urinalysis can reveal a lot of important information about your kidney function and overall health, including the presence of proteins, blood, glucose, and other substances that might indicate an underlying issue. There are two primary ways to test for protein in the urine, the dipstick test and a 24-hour urine collection test. Dipstick test, this is one of the simplest and most common ways to detect protein in urine. The test involves dipping a small strip, called a dipstick, into a sample of your urine. The strip has special chemicals on it that change color when they come into contact with proteins, such as albumin. The intensity of the color change can provide an indication of how much protein is present. While this test is fast and convenient, it's not the most accurate method. 
It can give false positives if the urine is particularly concentrated, such as after vigorous exercise or if you're dehydrated. However, it's a useful first step to determine if further testing is needed. 24-hour urine collection. If a dipstick test shows elevated protein levels, your doctor might recommend a 24-hour urine collection test for a more accurate measurement. This test requires you to collect all your urine over a full 24-hour period, which can then be analyzed in a lab to determine exactly how much protein is being excreted. A 24-hour urine test provides a much clearer picture of your kidney function and helps to determine if the proteinuria is significant enough to require treatment. This test is particularly useful for identifying conditions like nephrotic syndrome, where large amounts of protein are lost in the urine. Albumin to creatinine ratio, ACR Another common diagnostic tool is the albumin to creatinine ratio, ACR. This test compares the amount of albumin, a type of protein, to the amount of creatinine, a waste product, in a single urine sample. A higher than normal ACR can indicate that your kidneys aren't functioning properly. The ACR is particularly useful for people with diabetes or high blood pressure, as it helps detect early signs of kidney disease, even when the total protein levels are still within the normal range. Blood tests, in addition to urine tests, Blood tests may also be necessary to assess your kidney function. Specifically, your doctor may order a blood urea nitrogen BUN, test and a serum creatinine test to check for waste products in your blood. Elevated levels of BUN and creatinine can indicate that your kidneys are not filtering waste as effectively as they should be, which might explain why protein is leaking into the urine. These blood tests can also help rule out other potential causes of proteinuria such as liver disease or heart failure. Kidney biopsy, in more severe or unclear cases, a kidney biopsy might be needed. A biopsy involves taking a small sample of kidney tissue and examining it under a microscope to look for signs of damage or disease. This test is often used when the cause of proteinuria isn't clear from urine or blood tests alone, or when your doctor suspects a more serious kidney condition, such as glomerulonephritis or nephrotic syndrome. Regular monitoring and early detection are critical, especially if you have risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, or a family history of kidney disease. The sooner proteinuria is diagnosed, the more effective treatments can be in slowing or halting kidney damage. Treatment of proteinuria Now that we've covered what proteinuria is, its causes, symptoms, and diagnosis, let's talk about the most important part, treatment. Treating proteinuria effectively depends on addressing its underlying cause. Since proteinuria is often a symptom of another condition, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, or kidney disease, the primary goal of treatment is to manage that underlying condition. Let's break down the most common treatment options, managing diabetes. If diabetes is the cause of your proteinuria, controlling your blood sugar levels is the key to protecting your kidneys. High blood sugar levels damage the small blood vessels in your kidneys over time, leading to protein leakage. To manage diabetes, your doctor may recommend a combination of lifestyle changes and medications. Insulin or oral hypoglycemic agents can help lower blood sugar levels, while a healthy diet, regular exercise, and weight management can also play a significant role in controlling diabetes. Regular monitoring of blood sugar and kidney function is essential for preventing further kidney damage. Controlling high blood pressure. For people with hypertension, controlling blood pressure is crucial to reduce proteinuria and prevent kidney damage. Medications such as angiotensin converting enzyme ACE, inhibitors and angiotensin II receptor blockers RBs, are often prescribed because they have been shown to lower protein levels in the urine and protect the kidneys. These medications help relax blood vessels, reducing the pressure on the kidneys and slowing the progression of kidney disease. Along with medication, lifestyle changes such as reducing salt intake, exercising regularly, and managing stress can also help lower blood pressure. Treating kidney disease, if proteinuria is due to an underlying kidney condition, such as glomerulonephritis or nephrotic syndrome, treatment will focus on managing that specific condition. In some cases, corticosteroids or immunosuppressive medications may be prescribed to reduce inflammation in the kidneys. 
These medications can help reduce protein leakage by targeting the underlying cause of kidney damage. In more severe cases, dialysis may be required to filter waste products from the blood when the kidneys are no longer able to do so effectively. Lifestyle changes, in addition to medical treatments, lifestyle changes can also play a significant role in managing proteinuria and protecting your kidneys. A kidney-friendly diet that's low in salt, processed foods, and animal protein can help reduce the strain on your kidneys and prevent further damage. It's also important to stay hydrated, but avoid overloading your kidneys with too much fluid. Regular exercise can help control blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol levels, all of which are important for maintaining kidney health. Quitting smoking and limiting alcohol intake are also essential steps to protect your kidneys. Medication adjustments, if certain medications are causing or worsening proteinuria, your doctor may need to adjust your treatment plan. For example, if NSAIDs or other drugs are contributing to kidney damage, your doctor may recommend alternative medications that are less harmful to the kidneys. It's important to work closely with your healthcare provider to find a balance between managing your condition and protecting your kidney health. Monitoring and regular checkups, once proteinuria is detected, it's essential to monitor your kidney function regularly. This involves periodic urine tests to check for protein levels, as well as blood tests to assess kidney function. Regular checkups with your healthcare provider will help track the progress of your treatment and allow for any necessary adjustments to prevent further kidney damage. In many cases, early treatment of proteinuria can slow or even reverse kidney damage, especially when the underlying cause is addressed promptly. However, if proteinuria is left untreated, it can lead to more serious kidney conditions, including chronic kidney disease and kidney failure, which may require more aggressive treatments such as dialysis or a kidney transplant. Prevention of proteinuria Preventing proteinuria largely involves managing the risk factors that contribute to kidney damage. While some causes of proteinuria, like genetic conditions or autoimmune diseases, may not be entirely preventable, there are several steps you can take to protect your kidneys and reduce your risk of developing proteinuria. Control blood sugar levels. If you have diabetes, keeping your blood sugar levels under control is one of the most important steps you can take to prevent proteinuria. High blood sugar damages the blood vessels in the kidneys, leading to protein leakage. Regular monitoring of blood sugar, along with a healthy diet and exercise, can help prevent kidney damage. In some cases, medications or insulin may be necessary to maintain optimal blood sugar levels. Manage blood pressure. High blood pressure is a major risk factor for both proteinuria and kidney disease. To prevent proteinuria, it's important to keep your blood pressure within a healthy range. This can be achieved through lifestyle changes, such as reducing salt intake, exercising regularly, and managing stress. In some cases, medications like ACE inhibitors or ARBs may be necessary to lower blood pressure and protect the kidneys. Maintain a healthy diet. A kidney-friendly diet is essential for preventing proteinuria and protecting kidney health. This includes reducing your intake of salt, processed foods, and animal protein, which can put a strain on the kidneys. Instead, focus on eating a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. Staying hydrated is also important, but it's essential to avoid excessive fluid intake, which can overload the kidneys. Exercise regularly, regular physical activity helps control blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol levels, all of which are important for kidney health. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise most days of the week to keep your kidneys functioning optimally. Avoid smoking and limit alcohol. Smoking damages blood vessels and reduces blood flow to the kidneys, increasing the risk of kidney damage and proteinuria. If you smoke, quitting is one of the best things you can do for your kidney health. Limiting alcohol intake is also important, as excessive alcohol can increase blood pressure and contribute to kidney damage. Regular checkups, if you have risk factors for proteinuria, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, or a family history of kidney disease, it's essential to have regular checkups with your healthcare provider. Early detection of proteinuria can lead to more effective treatment and better outcomes.
Taking these preventive steps can significantly reduce your risk of developing proteinuria and help protect your kidneys from long-term damage. Conclusion Now that we've explored proteinuria from its causes to its diagnosis and treatment, let's recap the key takeaways. Proteinuria, though seemingly just an abnormal amount of protein in the urine, is a significant marker of underlying kidney problems. It's often a symptom rather than a disease itself, signaling that the kidneys are not functioning at their best. Understanding the importance of early detection and management of proteinuria can help prevent serious complications like chronic kidney disease, CKD, kidney failure, or even cardiovascular issues down the road. The kidneys perform the crucial task of filtering waste from our blood while retaining essential substances like proteins. When these filters, known as glomeruli, become damaged, they start leaking protein into the urine. Proteinuria can be caused by a variety of conditions, including diabetes, hypertension, kidney diseases, infections, and even medications. Identifying and addressing the root cause is critical for effective treatment. Whether through lifestyle changes, medications, or in severe cases, dialysis or kidney transplants, managing the underlying cause of proteinuria can help restore kidney health or at least slow down its progression. Symptoms of proteinuria are often silent in the early stages, which is why regular screening is so important, especially for those with risk factors like diabetes, high blood pressure, or a family history of kidney disease. As the condition progresses, symptoms such as foamy urine, swelling in the hands and feet, weight gain, fatigue, and high blood pressure may appear, signaling that it's time to seek medical attention. These signs should never be ignored as early intervention is key to preventing further kidney damage. Diagnosis of proteinuria typically begins with a simple dipstick test and can progress to more detailed assessments like the 24-hour urine collection test, the albumin to creatinine ratio, ACR, and blood tests. In more complex cases, a kidney biopsy may be required to identify the specific cause of the condition. Once diagnosed, the focus shifts to treatment which can vary depending on the underlying cause. Medications like ACE inhibitors and ARBs are commonly prescribed to protect the kidneys and reduce protein levels in the urine. For people with diabetes or high blood pressure, controlling blood sugar and blood pressure is essential to managing proteinuria. Lifestyle changes play a vital role in both treating and preventing proteinuria. A balanced, kidney-friendly diet, regular physical activity, staying hydrated, and avoiding smoking and excessive alcohol consumption are all key factors in maintaining healthy kidney function. For those at higher risk, such as individuals with diabetes, hypertension, or a family history of kidney disease, regular checkups with a healthcare provider are crucial for early detection and management. Prevention, as always, is better than cure. By managing chronic conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and getting regular checkups, you can significantly reduce your risk of developing proteinuria. For those already living with the condition, following your doctor's advice and making the necessary lifestyle adjustments can help you manage your condition and protect your kidneys from further damage. In closing, proteinuria is not something to take lightly. While it may seem like a minor issue at first glance, it can be a warning sign of more serious kidney problems. If you notice any symptoms or if you have risk factors like diabetes or high blood pressure, it's essential to get tested and work with your healthcare provider to address the underlying cause. The good news is that with early detection and proper management, it's possible to prevent further kidney damage and lead a healthy, active life. Lastly, if you found this information helpful, or if you have any questions about proteinuria, I encourage you to leave a comment below. Your feedback is always appreciated, and it helps others who may be dealing with similar health concerns. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more valuable health content, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. Stay informed, stay proactive, and take care of your kidneys, they're vital to your overall well-being.